Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Goody, consultant in reproductive medicine. I work at the Homerton Fertility Center in London. The topic I'm going to discuss today is probably one of the most difficult topics of assisted conception, and that is fluid in the endometrial cavity. And what do we do about it? Now let's go back to papers which were written many years ago and this was 1991 where three cases were discussed and if you have a look at them it's very similar hydrosalpings fluid drained embryo transfer done negative result again young patient hydrosalpings either hydrosalpings drained fluid aspirated embryos replaced and pregnancy test negative and those doing assisted conception will know that this is probably one of the most difficult subjects to treat so what I have done is I've reviewed the known literature and seen what happens if you have fluid in the endometrial cavity the question is where does this fluid come from? And that is something which has many reasons. One of the commonest reasons that we see is it may come from a hydrosalpings, damage in the tubes. It may come from aggressive stimulation of the ovaries with high progesterone levels, leading to collection of fluid and overactive fluid generation that occurs in the endometrium. It come, can come due to infections, which are again a common cause of fluid in the endometrial cavity. And it also could come after an HCG trigger. And that's something which we need to be aware about. What is fluid? It could be blood, it could be mucus, it could be endometrial secretions, or it could be tubal fluid. We also know that sporadic collections may be observed and the incidence, in fact, is between 3 and 8.2%. Now, what we know is that if there is fluid, the chance of pregnancies is generally tend to go down. Also, if you see fluid in the proliferative phase, that means when you start stimulating, in fact, success rates are worse. Even though that fluid decreases in size by the time you come for an endometrial or an embryo transfer. Are there any factors that would suggest that fluid in the cavity has a worse prognosis? Now, if you, there is collection of fluid, which is due to a tubal obstruction or a hydrosalpings or infection, the prognosis is worse then when it comes associated with polycystic ovaries. And probably what it means is that if there is some form of organic disease which is causing leakage of fluid due to inflammation, may it be infection or may it be past infection leading to hydrosalpings, those collections tend to have a negative impact on implantation compared to those which are hormonally based. Now, another nice paper was presented where it was suggested does the, does the amount of fluid in the endometrial cavity make a difference? And if you look at this paper, which showed they measured the amount of fluid, they measured the APD diameter of the fluid, and they me measured the endometrial thickness and subtracted it from the APD diameter. They detected fluid in about 46 women from 1,500 plus women. The incidence was about 2.95%. It ra the range occurred from 1 millimeter to 10 millimeter. A large number of them, 50% of them had tubal infertility. 29% had visible hydrosalpings. A small proportion had endometriosis. And all this seems to be falling in place. One, there has to be some amount of inflammation. So a large number of these are likely to come up 
from due to infection or a heart resalpix. And what does this tell us? It told us that if the fluid collection is less than three millimeter, the chances of pregnancy are better. If the fluid collection is more, the chances of pregnancy are significantly worse. Which we know of recent is that after HCG trigger, sometimes fluid collection starts. This fluid collection is less likely to come from a hydrosalpinx or infection. It is more likely to come as a reaction to the trigger or to the high estrogen that is circulating in the environment. In the absence of a hydrosalpinx, the success rates are very good. The amount of fluid is critical. You have a small amount of fluid, the success rates are much better. If the fluid is less than 3.5 millimeter, in an HCG induced collection, success rates are relatively good. There was a very good meta-analysis done which confirmed all the findings which I have earlier enumerated. It then ex goes ahead to explain that if there is a hydrosalpinx, why does a fluid in the endometrial cavity worsen the res results? And the answer is that the fluid contains cytokines and an endotoxin and even if a hydrosalping is found in stimulation and sometimes you do find them during stimulation in those cases it is far better to cancel the embryo replacement and wait for the hydrosalpings to be treated once you clip the hydrosalpings or you remove the hydrosalpings the chances of fluid collecting inside are diminished now the slightly different version that comes up is what happens when you see during stimulation without the hydrosalpinx and you confirm that there is no sign of tubal damage. Now in those cases it is likely to come from high amount of estrogen that is flowing. It is sometimes seen in PCOS patients and it is a fluid generation that comes after HCG in high responders. What do you do in these cases? If the fluid is transient, don't worry about it. But if the fluid comes up after an HCG injection or during stimulation, there is no harm in aspirating the fluid and pregnancy rates seem to be very much similar. What do we do if there's a collection? Number one is search for a hydrosalpinx, search for infection. And if both of these are not there, and if this is a fluid that is often coming up due to hormonal stimulation, in those cases, if the fluid is more than three millimeter, it is important that you drain the fluid. You can drain it using an embryo transfer catheter. Retaining it seems to increase the number of abnormal results. Aspiration is an option. If you drain a hydrosalpinx, it seems to fill up again and that's something which should be avoided. There have been studies which suggested that draining the hydrosalpinx before doing an embryo transfer, a few hours before doing the embryo transfer, may improve the chances of success provided there is no hydrosalpinx. I keep saying that, provided there is in the absence of a hydrosalpinx. The easier alternative is to freeze the embryos and then reassess. Often when you do a hysteroscopy, it doesn't seem to help because hysteroscopy cannot find out fluid. And when you do a hysteroscopy, you come out often saying the cavity is completely normal. In these cases, I would say drain the fluid and do the embryo transfer if it persists after preparation. Now, there's another reason why fluid in the cavity could occur and that occurs in hypo hypoc conditions. Those who come for the course, which I do, and I go through showing how we can get rid of those collections without aspirating them. And that is a different topic altogether. But this 
in cases when there is fluid in the endometrial cavity, find out whether that fluid is because of a hydrosalpinx. Search for a hydrosalpinx. Does it come up during a stimulation cycle? If it does, and if there is a hydrosalpinx during a stimulated cycle, collect the eggs and freeze the embryos, do not put them back. But if there is fluid in the cavity that comes up after an HCG injection, or due to stimulation, aspirating that fluid before embryo transfer seems to give very good results. Thank you very much.